In this episode, we're going to talk about managing subject matter expert time. Why? Because SMEs are like a hot topic all the time. Anyways, we're going to talk about some awesome tactics on how to get that SME conversation going, how to make it smooth, how to sneakily record what they're saying so you can use it against them. No, just kidding. And also um, that power struggle, the relationship thing and what we can do about it to make it better. This is episode one. My name is Anna Sabramowitz and welcome to the Ask Sabramowitz show where you ask your instructional design questions and I provide some instructional design answers and some unsolicited advice. So this first episode is going to address the question from Shelly T. You know who you are and I thank you for this question. And the question has to deal with managing SME time. SME stands for subject matter expert. And us as instructional designers, well, we deal with subject matter experts. That's a part of our job. We are experts in the learning design and subject matter experts are experts in our field. So let's talk a little bit about that. So I'll give you a little bit of a breakdown of what we're talking about and later we'll move on some into some tips where I think you'll, uh, you'll benefit from these strategies when you're working with your SME. Okay, so when we talk about instructional design and then we talk about subject matter experts, everybody's kind of got their circle of competence. So instructional designers, our circle of competence is things like figuring out performance support, what kind of needs a business has that we can actually help them solve or um, you might be an expert in online learning for instructional design, how to take things that are face-to-face and move them online. What are the different uh, dynamics that make one successful versus another? And also, I think this one's really important, um, how to figure out really good learning goals. Like, what are you really trying to achieve? So instructional designer, that's kind of their their mastery. Uh, That's what they're really good at. Now, a subject matter expert is an expert in content and context. So um, these are the people and you're looking for these people in these organizations that you're working with or in a different department. They can tell you the difference between what the procedures really look like versus um, how they apply in the real world. They know the context of how those things are used. And also um, a really good subject matter expert will also be able to tell you um, what a really good contextual activity is, what's really valuable. They're, they may not necessarily be able to come up with, um, with those specific activities on their own because they're not learning experts, but once you've worked with them to develop one, they'll be able to tell you exactly if it's valuable to the learner, if it's going to be of value for somebody to practice over time because they know the context that it will be applied in. So that's kind of what, you know, and where you see these overlap is that solution that you're going to create together. And that solution is whether uh, there's a problem in an organization that you're trying to solve with this uh, intervention, or it's an opportunity to make things more efficient or or to make things um, available to more learners at the same time. Anyways, okay, so I think a lot of Instructional designers ask things like, you know, do I, if I put together a really awesome form with questions for the subject matter expert, do I really even need to meet these people? Can I just, can't I, this is the instructional designer, by the way, can't I just send the subject matter expert the form? And my answer is always, no, do not do that. Uh, Because, what happens is you want to avoid the scenario where you just um, you just get sent a bunch of information from the subject matter expert who is not an expert in learning by the way and doesn't know exactly what you need sends you a bunch of info and then or content and then uh, what happens is you as the instructional designer are somehow supposed to uh, turn it into learning and and this squiggly line is supposed to um, represent that magic where you're handed a bunch of content and all of a sudden you can somehow extrapolate that into amazing learning and learning activities, which is unrealistic. So that's why 
when you're working with a subject matter expert, uh, you don't just you're not just working to uh, get the information out of them, but you're creating a relationship with this person so that you can not only iterate on the information you're getting, but also um, get them to tell you the, the awesome details that make that learning contextual. And they are the ones who provide you all that info to make your learning meaningful because you're not the subject matter expert, so you miss all the context. Anyways, so now let's move on to these three juicy tips that I have for you. Okay, so the first one is engage your SME in the process. And what I mean by that is the minute you can get that person in on um, when you're doing the needs assessment, when you're doing all those, figuring out all these results that the solution is going to get for the business and de deliver for the business and how you're going to measure the quality of that solution, involve your subject matter expert because the more they understand um, how they fit into that picture, what are they actually trying to produce, that's going to help them feel like one, where they can contribute and two, that they're actually a part of that solution, that they're not this, this outsider. And um, really you want to ask your SME, do they know what they're working towards? Uh, because I think a lot of times we make a lot of assumptions as, as uh, learning designers that uh, when a company engages in, let's say, even developing e-learning, that everybody in that company who's involved in that project knows what that's going to look like, but they may not. And I've been on projects where people said, well, what about the metadata? And I was like, what are you talking about? What's metadata? And, uh, and they were like, you know, metadata, because when they were working in computers a decade ago, they were tagging things and they thought that's, that's what the project entailed. So you really have to show examples and have them explain it back to you. Ask a lot of questions and, and don't feel like this has to be a, uh, some sort of a formal process. Just keep on asking your subject matter expert and the rest of your team, what are we producing? How is it going to prove, how is it going to show value? How are, how are you going to sell it to your learners? Ask them how they're going to do that. Record that conversation. Okay, so I am I know you have to ask <laughs> and you always have to ask, but um, when you can use something like your iPhone, the voice memos, to record the conversations you have, you don't lose all of those contextual nuances that the SME is giving you when they're describing a situation. Like imagine trying to write everything down and ask questions at the same time. It's it's impossible. So uh, what I do is I record all the conversations I have, then I go back and I listen to them, transcribe them, and then what they become is these really easy to search and uh, source uh, documents that you can later use to either um, add context to your situations that you're using for learning, or just go back and say, I need more, more clarification on this, and this is what you said. So it's, it's a really good diagnostic of, of the the knowledge that the subject matter expert has. So use it. And also with, with all the apps now that have, uh, that are on your smartphones, everybody's got one. And after a while, everybody forgets that they're there. So just say you're recording it and then forget about it. You can send it to yourself after. Now, this is, this one's really important. Ideal time. When you're negotiating for subject matter expert time in your project at the very beginning, you have to s specify the kinds of time you're asking for, because I think a lot of times, you know, we talked about the whole, we're just going to send them a bunch of content and they're going to create magically create learning. What happens is a lot of people assume that that's the kind of time you need from a subject matter expert, that they do all this gathering for you and then they send it off. You do something, send it back and they sit at their desk and they review it while realistically, if you're really uh, building a relationship with that SME and working to iterate on these activities, you're going to have to have face-to-face -face time, you're or, or at least that collaborative together time. And that's a different kind of time than uh, you uh, commuting on the train and reviewing documents and giving feedback. So when you're negotiating for SME time, make sure you negotiate for live meeting time and how long that's going to take to be realistic of the expectations versus how long you expect them to spend in document review, because those are two different kind of commitments. 
end. Here's your takeaway. Are you ready? We're already at the end. Can you believe it? Ask yourself, how can I make this process easier for the subject matter expert? Now, think about this. They're not a learning expert. This may be completely new to them. You know what you're doing. It's, it's important that you think about the fact that they're also almost a learner. They need to be supported and you need to create performance support for them to do their job effectively. So you need to do an orientation. What are you working towards? What are some supports that need to be in place? What kind of questions and answers and examples can they look at? Like when they're filling out a form, give them an example of what a good answer looks like or, or examples of other things that you've worked on that have really worked and turned out well into e-learning or storyboards. Give them those examples. Don't make them come up with stuff on their own because, and I gotta come back to this. There's a thing called, I, and I, I don't know if it's, um, if it's very common, but I feel like there's a little bit of a power struggle. When you first start this relationship uh, with a subject matter expert, um, I think that there's so much pressure on that subject matter expert from the start. If you don't clarify those roles, they don't know exactly what they're doing and what you need. They're kind of the gatekeepers of the information, but it's your job to make that really smooth and have them feel like they're contributing and, and also that it's, it's not as, as taxing on them because they have so many other things to do. Usually somebody's already fully, <laughs> fully engrossed in their job and then all of a sudden there's a, another learning project attached. So your job as the instructional designer is also to support them as this person who's learning how to design learning with you and really make, um, you know, what are some performance support pieces and forms that you can create to make their lives easier so they can support you better in your project. Okay, so I have a question of the day for you. All this SME stuff, really, it's about relationships. So I wanna hear your best strategies for developing a relationship, whether it's with a subject matter expert or somebody else on the project, your best tips. And of course, subscribe because we're gonna try and do this every week and I hope you wanna see more and I wanna do more. So yeah, like I'll see you later. Welcome to episode one of Ask the Brabwitz. Um, where 